porous. And you can imagine what kind of problems that's going to cause if you're managing a natural system that doesn't look like this to try to make it look like this. It stops being ecological management and starts being landscape gardening. Landscape gardening is great around the house, but you don't want to do it in a forest that you're trying to keep natural. Is this considered like the climax stage? Or uh, well, the problem with that whole subsectional theory is that it doesn't really apply well to natural systems. So uh, a lot of the, the old successionists thought the redwood was a serial stage to a dug fir forest. But really? Clements did not see redwood as a climax uh, stage. He saw it, he saw it as a serial stage to, to dug fir. Why did he think dug fir was the final? Because uh, redwood is is benefits so much from disturbance hmm. that he the, the the climax theory hypothesis suggests that any kind of disturbance uh, helps cereal uh, species, not climax species. Hmm. And every time you have a fire in redwood, it cuts out dug fir, it cuts out the other species. And so if you were to eliminate disturbance from this forest, you'd have an increase in the Douglas fir component. So from that standpoint, a strict Clementsian ecologist would say that redwood was not a climax species, which is one of the things that makes that whole theory kind of silly. <coughs> because if this isn't a climax forest, then what is, right? It's been here for tens of thousands of years. The, the trees are thousands of years old. It's about as stable as any system you're going to find. Well, if you left, like if there was no disturbance mm -hmm. in a redwood forest, would Doug, I mean, Doug fir wouldn't. It wouldn't really. No, come in but eventually. because of the way uh, it's defined, a climax community is is dominated by species that are not uh, promoted by disturbance. Hmm. Oh, climax. Yeah, <laughs> and there's also uh, there's a, a misconception about redwood that goes way back that it is an intolerant species. That is, that it is not tolerant of shade. And where that misconception comes from is that redwood does, does not seed very well without mineral soils. It doesn't reproduce from seed well unless you have a disturbance. But that's because it's re reproducing from clones most of the time rather than from seeds. And you don't need a lot of reproduction. If you have a tree that lives 2,000 years, you only need one successful tree recruited every 2,000 years to replace that tree. So it's a very low level of reproduction, yeah. I have a question about that. Is that one reason why the seeds or the cones are so small? Are they putting more energy into their growth than their Absolutely. reproduction? Absolutely. Yeah. Active? Yeah, so there, there's very little energy put into the into the seeds. Most of them are not viable. Um, you have, Occasionally you'll have a big seeding year, but uh, those are rare. And uh, you have big seeding flushes, but it's usually after some kind of disturbance. So have people done studies on like the viability of redwood seeds mm -hmm. and like what conditions they need? And that they sort have. Of thing? Cool. Yeah. Are there papers on it? There are. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah, and then I think it's about less than five percent viability. Wow. And does it have seeds. to have like a very specific? It's, it's, people are not very clear on it. There's been a few studies done. Um, some of the studies show that they really like mineral soils and, and fire ash. Other studies have, have found that they really like growing on rotten logs. Mm -hmm. So the one place they don't seem to like to grow in is a lot of heavy duff mm -hmm. on the forest floor. All right, onward.